The Rebellion in Lower Canada of 1837. Before you get to this recording, you want to make sure you have completed the previous recording about Upper Canada. So the Rebellion in Lower Canada, we start back once again looking at the Constitutional Act of 1791. Up to this point, the people that were referred to as the Loyalists were starting to move in as they wanted to have a separate British-style government. The Loyalists were Americans who did not support the American Declaration of Independence or the American Revolution for their independence. They wanted to remain with Great Britain. For whether they could not afford to have a ticket to sail back to Great Britain, or just to not want to, they were nonetheless not welcome to stay in the United States, so they moved north. Seeing that they couldn't settle along the St. Lawrence River because the French were there, they moved to the southern Ontario boot, surrounded by the Great Lakes. This resulted in Great Britain splitting Quebec up into upper and lower Canada, the two colonies, and now could elect the House of Representatives. In 1792, Quebec held their very first election. The Legislative Assembly had a long debate over who should be the speaker. The issue ultimately was language. because of the French and English. The compromise would be the assembly would be bilingual but the laws rewritten down in English. It should be noted that even though this was now a British territory with French-speaking people, this was the first time the French-speaking people had an election. In 1799, the assembly offered to send Can I play the tape 20 in 1799? 20,000 pounds to help England in their war against France. This is the war against Napoleon. While they were no longer a French territory, the idea of sending money to the Canadians to fight against Napoleon and France did not sit well with them. In 1810, the French Dominant Assembly voted to ban judges from the General Assembly. This resulted in the Governor Craig to dissolve the Assembly. He also suspended mail service, halted the printing of the French paper Le Canadien, and sent its producers, editors, writers, to jail. In 1822, London proposed to reunite Upper and Lower Canada to fix the French problem, but with significant amount of protest in French Canada, the idea was dropped. This is before Lord Durham had made his suggestion for the Act of Union. In 1823, they received a general with short £100,000 in his account, which generally would imply the money was quote unquote misplaced or mishandled. 1831, Lord Elmer, the governor, proposed that the executive council should give up control of the money in exchange for a permanent civil list of the salaries. Once again, the assembly refused. 1832, there was a riot referred to as the Montreal Massacre, where the French Canadians were shot at by French, by British troops. Three were killed. 1834, Louis-Joseph Papineau, the leader of the Popular Party of his Patriots, issued the 92 Resolutions, which essentially say the French Canadians will have complete control of Lower Canada. 
the assembly was dissolved. The French want an American style Senate. They wanted an American style independent government. But because of the revolution, the British government wanted nothing to do with American. And so in 1837, the British became sick and tired of dealing with the French. The French Prime Minister, Lord John Russell, had presented his 10 resolutions, which authorized the government to take necessary funds without the Assembly's approval there. And that marked the beginning of the rebellion in Lower Canada, because on the 7th of May, 1837, Louis-Joseph Papineau and his patriots issued their 12 resolutions. The 12 resolutions was, in effect, the French version of the American Declaration of Independence. And in his resolution, he stated that Lower Canada was no longer bound to Britain except by force. So you can already see by this point, the rebellion that happened in Lower Canada was already quite different from the rebellion in Upper Canada. While these rebellions happened at the same time, same year, they were not coordinated at all. So with the rebellion. 16th of November, 1837, Gosford got the troops he had asked for from Upper Canada. And John Colburn, Commander-in-Chief, uh, marked his troops from Upper Canada. He had warrants for issue for Papineau, and Louis Joseph Papineau was the leader of the reformers, just like Mackenzie was for Upper Canada and 25 others. On the 16th of November, a pro government force was ambushed by, by the rebels, which forced them to retreat, the government forces, that is. On the 22nd of November, Colburn sent um, a colonel to seize the Church of St. Denis. As Gorm attempted to march at night, hoping to catch the rebels, the patriots, the patriots referred to as the rebels, um, by surprise, church bells were, warn, were rang to warn the rebels of the incoming uh, attack. So the Battle of St. Denis was a prolonged battle. The actual battle lasted for quite a few hours as, as soon as the army finished marching throughout the night, they were in a pitch fight with a rebel force, the patriots that had had themselves entrenched. The walls of the church were very thick, so it made it impossible to be penetrated by t artillery uh, fire. And while it was very noisy and symbolically important, because after many hours of fighting, the British, from sheer exhaustion um, and running low supplies, had to pull back. So the Patriot rebels had won their first battle. Now, the commander was Thomas Brown, a rebel, made himself commander of the fortress and the nearby surrounding uh, hills. No, he is not a French individual, but he liked the ideas of the 12 resolutions and American style of independent government. On the 25th of November, there was a Battle of St. Charles, another church fight. And they would battle um, each other until the rebels would be defeated by overwhelming force. However, during the fight, and actually before the Battle of St. Denis, Louis Joseph Papineau, the leader, had fled to the United States. The last rebel stronghold was at St. Osh. By this point, winter was already set in, and while there was other battles at other churches and locations throughout the St. Lawrence River area, St. Osh was the last major engagement in the rebellion of 1837. And while the rebels were outnumbered with insufficient weaponry, they were able to hold themselves up in the church. Eventually, the British 
I also have in, in Upper Canada at Montgomery's Tavern at St. Ours, the British burnt down the church and fired upon the rebels as they were fleeing the burning building. Eventually, the outcome from either one of these battles, or rebellions for that matter, would be Canadian independence 30 years later. Papineau, like Mackenzie, would be able to return to Canada. Some of his followers were sent to Australia, the present colony, There would be change that would come to a colony of Upper Canada and Lower Canada as a result.